A lot of my clients ask me, why should we use the Tomatis method with my child? Now, a lot of times this is after they've been in uh, therapy and receiving sensory integration intervention for a while, uh, but some people actually are really specifically calling to learn more about the Tomatis method. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk with you about that and share why we feel there's so much value in using this method, both to support what we're doing in sensory OT sessions, but also as a standalone intervention. So as we're thinking about the senses, everybody knows the five senses, taste, touch, hearing, smell, sight. But then we also have two additional senses, the proprioceptive sense, which is that awareness of your muscles and your joints, and the vestibular sense. And that vestibular system is responsible for giving you a sense of balance, perception of space, speed, direction of movement, and allows you to use that information then to communicate with the other senses. When sensory systems are working well and they're working well together, it really allows a child to self-regulate, establish motor skills, social skills, play skills, interact with the environment, and engage, and engage in age-appropriate activities so that they can develop greater independence. When there is a breakdown in any of those sensory systems, it impacts the way that the child understands, reacts to, and uses that sensory information to adapt and respond to the things that are going on around them. And on top of that, we expect them to still be able to play, listen, communicate, sit in circle time if they're young, behave, uh, and learn in a structured classroom environment. Now, the next logical question as we're talking about auditory programs is why do we need to focus on the vestibular and auditory systems to support self-regulation and learning? It's because the ear is amazing. The ear is what provides 80% of the energy to the brain and supports our arousal and attention. It also provides the information from the vestibular system and the auditory system to other sensory systems in the body to give you more active body control and ability to use your body in the world. Now that vestibular system is communicating that information to your vision and your muscles and your joints so that you can get better control of your body, better balance, better coordination. And the auditory system is taking in and processing sound for speech and communication and language. So the vestibular and auditory systems have connections to the cranial nerves in the brain that influence our regulatory capacities as well as help to stimulate the connections of our brain pathways that link vision, motor, and postural responses. So this is really what allows our body to be able to work together to adapt and respond to the many demands that we experience throughout the day. It's also important to know that the auditory and vestibular systems are fully formed at four and a half to five months in utero. And this really sets the foundation for our experience with the world. And we use this information that's coming in while we're still developing for bonding and attachment with our mothers. So it plays a significant role in our emotional regulation, co-regulation, and eventually self-regulation. In the brain, the auditory system is linked to the amygdala. And that is the structure that is responsible for our fight or flight response. And an easy way to think about this is if you are standing in the middle of the forest in the dark of night, every little tree branch, every little leaf rustle attracts your attention because your auditory system is on high alert and you need to make sure that you can react quickly in case there's any danger. So we really have a protective response that's associated with the auditory system that needs to be supported and regulated. And we can use the ear as a portal to the brain to influence those regulatory capacities so that we can stimulate development of all the other pathways that lead to executive function and brain development through those cranial nerves. Now, 
as far as listening is, is concerned, we need the auditory system to differentiate between sounds that we use in language, to decide what sounds to pay attention to, to understand rhythm and timing and pacing of language and conversation, and use the details of sound information for higher level skills like reading, communication, thinking and reasoning, listening to lectures, direction following, and auditory working memory to actively listen and attend and process what people are saying so that we can think critically and reason through the information that's coming in. In summary, the developmental progression is that first, children need to be able to self-regulate. People need to be able to self-regulate. And there are many, many adults who haven't gotten this foundation in place yet. After regulation comes a development of the awareness of time and space through the auditory and the vestibular system. And then next comes timing and sequencing, both in our body in the form of communicate, uh, sorry, rhythm and coordination and movement through space, as well as communication. And only after all of those things start to come together do we see those ex higher level executive functions develop, like planning and sequencing, working memory, and attention and focus over time. Now, why do we need to know all of this when we're thinking about the Tomatis Method and auditory programs? Well, the first thing that I'll say is that hearing is a passive process, but listening is an active process that we use to intentionally learn and communicate with others. And we hear in two ways. First, we hear ourselves through bone conduction. And that's why you sound different in a voicemail than you think you do in real life. And while sometimes listening to yourself on video is a little bit jarring and overwhelming until you get more comfortable with yourself. It's also the way that we experience, let's say, drums in a band. Everyone has been to a parade and they've been standing in a crowd and you feel the drums moving by you, but you hear the flute and the melody through air conduction. Air conduction is how we hear other people and how we receive sound messages from the environment. So the sound comes in through the ear and vibrates the middle ear bones to make the muscles contract and, re and relax and send the messages into the inner ear and eventually the cranial nerves to communicate the information to the brain. So why does the Tomatis method work the way that it does and how does it use these principles of how the brain and the body receive auditory information to influence how you're functioning. Well, it does it in a couple different ways. The first thing is through the use of gating. And this is enhancing the contrast between the high and the low frequencies. So sometimes you're enhancing high frequencies, sometimes you're enhancing low frequencies to trigger the ear muscles to contract and relax in response to the changes in the frequency. And this conditions the inner ear muscles by using those different frequencies so that it function so that they function optimally for sound perception. The Tomatis method also uses high frequencies to provide energy to the brain for attention and focus and processing. And it uses unpredictability so that you never really know when those changes in the frequencies are going to happen so that the body can always be orienting and attending and actively listening, tuning in to those changes in the sound. The way that the Tomatis method works is based a lot on not just the technology, but what they're able to do with the music. So the first parameter is that they make sure that they're using monaural headphones. Now the reason that this is important and it's different from stereo headphones is that the same message is coming into both ears, which means you're getting maximum stimulation to those middle ear muscles and you're helping them to both exercise efficiently so that both ears are getting a similar degree of stimulation and activation. 
The second parameter that is unique to the Tomatis method is something called delay and precession. This is a process of setting a little delay between the time that the bone conduction gates over to the high frequency sounds and when the air conduction follows it. The reason that we even care to do something like this is that in real time, we're supposed to be able to quickly orient and tune in and take in the message uh, that's coming to us through our auditory system. But we all know that a lot of children and even people in general that struggle to really tune in and orient to sound to get the information they need quickly and efficiently. So by setting a delay, we can actually re-educate the ear so that the ear muscles have time to accurately work and respond to the message coming in. So imagine this is similar to being tapped on the shoulder and someone saying, get ready, get ready. He's almost, he's almost going to talk. He's coming to the podium. And then the second that the speaker opens his mouth to speak, you've already oriented your body and tuned in to the message and you're ready to listen. Now, as you go through the treatment intensives, you can shrink down the, uh, the delay between that bone and air conduction to gradually increase the efficiency with which the ear is responding and processing the information coming in. Pretty cool, right? Another parameter is something called filtering. So there's different types of filters within the Tomatis method, high pass, low pass, band path. And the reason that we have these filters is so that we can concentrate on a particular frequency zone low frequency sounds really go in through bone conduction and activate all of those um, senses inside of the body so that you're more connected to your body. Middle frequency zone really enhances communication and speech and language frequencies. And high frequency music enhances the energy and the attention centers within the brain. The last parameter is laterality. So we have two ears, but they have different functions. Our left ear is much more of an emotional ear. It picks up on the rhythm of music while the right ear picks up on the details and the mel melody. And the two ears really work together so that we can efficiently shift back and forth between our emotional self and our reasoning, thinking, detail-oriented self. The right ear is favoring the development of positive affect. Can I separate myself from my emotions, tune into what's going on, and actively listen to information that's coming in? But if we lead more with our left ear, then we're much more emotional and we tend to be prone to negative affect or anxiety. So we really want, if a person is struggling with their regulation, we want to pay attention to this laterality feature because we can actually help to influence and strengthen the, that right ear to help the person extract themselves from the emotional influence of their left ear and be available to tune into information and reason through things in the way that they need to. And this balance is really important when we're talking about community and connection to others, and active listening skills. So in summary, the Tomatis method really helps to improve our connection to ourself and the world around us so that we can initiate and communicate, uh, be less frustrated, and have improved energy, motivation, and self-regulation. It helps with body control through activation of the vestibular system because we can improve our sense of space and timing. We can improve our balance, our postural control, and have better organization and motor planning of our body movements. It can have receptive language benefits because we can follow conversations better, tune into directions better, understand what people are saying. There's a lot of things that we can do to concentrate on either the body zone or the communication zone. And we, again, remember that process of development. We need to get that body foundation work, working before we can start focusing on the communication zone and improving receptive language and also improving the receptive language um, 
so that we're able to both receive the information, but also adequately express ourselves, have better articulation, better voice modulation, and um, better ability to kind of combine our language information and communicate with others. And then finally, we really take all this information so that we can build on some of those executive function and attention skills that we need once these other two foundations are in place. So I hope this slideshow has been educational for you and that you've learned a lot about the benefits and the reasons behind using the Tomatis method to enhance outcomes uh, for children who have sensory difficulties, attention issues, regulation issues, um, speech and language issues, communication issues. We really can do a lot to influence the body through the ear and make these children much more available to any other type of uh, tutoring or speech therapy or any other supports that you might put in place to help with uh, developing coping strategies, education, learning, and social communication. If you have any questions or you want to uh, come in and uh, talk to us about the potential benefit of the Tomatis Method for your child, please submit the contact form or you can contact our office directly at uh, 203-200-7256. Again, my name is Aubrey Schmally and I am a Tomatis consultant and I am also the owner of Sensational Achievements. I look forward to hearing from you and definitely keep looking around our site and we have lots of other great information to offer you to help you determine what type of intervention might be best for your child. And if you're an adult, we certainly work with adults as well. Please just contact the office and we can give you a customized listening consultation.